So you may recall on our last video, we ground the faceplate of the ID grinder with the understanding that we're going to be putting an adapter on and a chuck on the adapter. And you may recall that we said we wanted to grind the face to make sure that it's true. We didn't want to assume anything. So we know we got that done. The next step is to put an adapter on there like this. The adapter is important because it's going to hold the chuck, which is what this is. And the chuck is a really important feature. And I want to talk to you about that. It was a very clever guy by the name of Jim Buck that came up with the idea of having a secondary adjustment on the chuck uh, so you can true the jaws in. It's pretty clever. So what he did was he came up with some screws opposite here. In this case, there's four. Some of them only have three because his patents run out, by the way. And that bolts onto the, uh, onto the faceplate here, the adapter. And you leave these bolts loose that affix it. And then you can use these screws right here to kind of true it up because there's about 20 thousandths difference between this OD and this ID. That gives you the ability to move around. Very clever idea. But if you want to get it closer than that, let's say that you want to get it within less than a thousandths. Why would you want to get it that close? Because let's assume that you're going to grind something that already has the OD ground and you want to make it concentric to the OD. Let me show you the way that we like to do it, and we're going to take you out there and, and actually do it for you. Again, we're going to grind, once we put this faceplate on, we're going to true the faceplate up as well. We're going to grind the face of this adapter, and we're going to grind this OD. And the OD really is necessary, but it makes me feel good when I grind it, so I'm going to grind it. And then we're going to take the chuck, and we're going to bolt the chuck on. And then what we're going to do is, and this is the way I think it should be done. I like to go in the back of the jaws about three quarter of an inch from the back end. And I like to relieve that. So I'm going to grind that bigger. Okay, so this is our part and we're going to assume that we want to grind this ID concentric with the OD here within a thousandths. Uh, and in order to do that, we made a slug that will fit inside the chuck. And we're going to put this slug way in the back where we relieve the jaws. Remember we went in there and we ground the jaws and we relieved them about 10, 15 thousandths bigger than the front part of the, of the chuck jaws. So we're going to put that inside there, way in the back where we ground it, and we're going to tighten it like so. And we're going to show you all that when we're out there on the ID grinder. That puts pressure equally on all three jaws and it allows us then to have these jaws settle down so they're not going this way, but they're going that way, which is the way we're going to be holding our part, right? We're not going to be holding our part this way. Some people, and, and, and I'm, I'm okay with it, but some people want to put pressure on the outside and grind the jaws. Well, think about that. If the jaws cock a little bit one way or another, you got a problem. It's not going to be as true as if you put this in the back and you grind the jaws going forward. So again, we relieve the jaws in the back and we then put our, uh, our, our slug in there that's going to be the size of the part we're going to be holding. We grind the jaws and then we come in here and we put our part in and we grab it. That I think is the best and the most accurate way to get the jaws as true as possible. Again, there's other ways to do it and I'm not saying that it's the right way or the wrong way. I'm just saying that I like this way and in my view I think it's more accurate because of that. It gets rid of the tension that would be going this way if you're grabbing it on the outside. And again, you could put a ring on the outside and then grind all three jaws, but you got pressure going the opposite direction. You know, that's not the way you're going to hold the part. You're not going to hold the part cranking it out. You're going to hold the part cranking it in. So I think this is a better way. Yes, it takes more time. It's a little more time consuming to do it, but I think you're going to get, uh, the results are going to be better. So we're going to head out to the shop and we're going to uh, take the adapter, which we've already bolted it on there, and we're going to go ahead and grind the face of the, of the adapter and the OD, and then we're going to mount the chuck, we're going to relieve the jaws in the back, we're going to put our slug in it, we're going to grind the jaws in the front, we're going to put a part in it, we're going to check it out. And it's kind of exciting to do, so let's go out back and let's give it a shot. All right, so here we are. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to dress the grinding wheel, as you can see. I want to make the outside uh, true. Now I'm going to go in and dish out the inner part of the wheel, so we have a sharp outside edge. And at this point, I'm going to go to the outside, let the wheel overlap past the part just a little bit, and come in and, and plunge in. 
And I'm not going to walk in. I could do that, but I'm not going to do that because the edge of the wheel will break down. So I'm going to pull away, pull the wheel away, and come up close to the OD, and I'm going to come in. And right now, I'm going to grind the OD. Now, if you'll take a look at the OD right there, you'll see that uh, right there. You see where the sparks are? And it's hitting a little heavy on one side. Now, again, I didn't need to grind the OD, but I, I, it makes me feel good to do that. And frankly, it's a good example of showing how you can grind an OD on an ID grinder. It's very possible to do, and it's a good thing to do in many cases, particularly if you're trying to get an ID concentric with an OD, which is not what we're doing here. And then as soon as that's done, now I back the wheel off just a bit because I don't like the wheel to touch, touch two faces at the same time. Uh, it, in some cases, you can do that, but uh, sometimes you get vibration in there and you'll, you'll get a part that's maybe a little out of round or maybe a little chatter. So now I'm coming in and I'm starting to hit the face again. And what we're really, the sparks you're really seeing is where it's hitting the corner. There's a little bit of a radius in that corner there, and then we're taking that radius out. And now we're starting to, if you look at the pattern on the, on the faceplate, you'll see that we are now grinding the face. We're going to continue to do that until we blend it in with the first cut that we made. And you'll be able to see that here shortly. There it comes. Right in that area. There, I think we're about there. There we go. So we'll let it spark out just a little bit. And I like that. It's a good finish, good pattern. Right. Thumbs up, Bailey. Okay. So we're going to wipe it down a little bit. Now we turn the spindle off, obviously for safety reasons. And uh, we're going to take the chuck, now we're going to mount it. Now remember, this is a three-jaw chuck, as you can see, but it has the auxiliary uh, cap screws in the back end, or actually set screws in the back end, so we can adjust it on that flange that we just ground. And we're going to put the bolts in and just snug it up just a bit. Now, why are we just snugging it up? Because we want some movement so I can, when we use those, uh, set screws in the back, pushing on that OD, we've got, we've got the ability to move it. So I'm just snugging them up a little. And we're going to put a part in here right now, and we're going to start truing it up. And remember, when we push on that, or tighten it, it moves the part in the upward position. When we loosen it, it goes the other way. So I've got it fairly close. So I'm going to snug the bolts up just a little bit more. And we didn't show you all that fussing that we went through. But now we're just about there, and I'm within about a thousandths. And believe it or not, you can tap it, and you can see we're using a piece of plastic. I'm not a big proponent of tapping on spindles, but we're not using a sledgehammer, folks. We're using a piece of plastic, and it's not going to harm the bearings. So there we are. Now I'm feeling pretty good about that. Now why did we do that? Well, we wanted to get the jaws reasonably close. Now we could have indicated the outside of the chuck, but that doesn't tell the jaws where they are. The jaws could be in a different plane or a different position. Here we're dressing the wheel again. As you, you can see we changed wheels. We're using a smaller diameter wheel because we've got to get inside uh, the chuck. And then we're going to go in the back like we talked about. And we're going to relieve the back part of the jaws. So we're going to, all, going to go all the way in. And we're going to relieve about three quarters of an inch of those jaws. Right about there is where we're going to stop. We're going to come in and we're going to grind about 10 to 12 thousandths per side or per jaw as a relief. So we're making the jaws bigger in the back. And again, that gives us the option to put our part in there and grab it way in the back. And then we can grind the jaws without interfering uh, with the part that we have in there. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to grind all the jaws. So now we've got about an inch and a half in the front of the jaws, and the back has been relieved. So we're going to put our slug in there back in the relief area, tighten it down. And you know, I'm just never really big on cranking everything down like some people like to do, but you need to put a reasonable amount of pressure so it's not loose, but there's no point making it so tight that a gorilla can't loosen it. Okay, so here we are grinding the jaws. And you'll see that it looks like, from judging from the sparks, uh, we're getting a pretty good even pattern. And I'm feeding in there, as you can see. And now we're just walking our way out. So I'm done feeding in. And we're walking out to the edge. Keep in mind, this is double speed. 
So this is not actual time that we're doing this. This is twice as fast. So when you're looking at the way things are running, uh, we're going we're going a lot faster. We're going a lot slower than it looks. So I'm looking at the jaws here, and I think I like the pattern. It looks pretty darn good to me. So the jaws look like they've cleaned up. I'm feeling pretty good about it. Now we've turned the spindle off here, and we got our slug out. Had to use a little magnet to get it out because it was buried back in there. And now we could, remember we were going to grind a part that was going to be that size of that slug. Well, we don't, we're not going to do that at the moment, but we are going to bring in a part that's a little bit smaller. And we're going to clamp that down. We're going to put an indicator on there. We're going to see what it looks like. So the indicator here is running pretty true. It's within a couple of tenths. And we're also going to sweep it this way so we can check the taper. And also we're going to check the run out at that end. It looks great. So it's within a couple of tenths. I'll be in straight and look at that. Check it out right there within a couple of tenths. So you've, you've got an idea of what we, uh, what we were trying to accomplish in the shop. And I think we did a good job of getting it done. And that is the way that we would grind the jaws of an ID grinder to make sure that the jaws are as true as possible. So when you're holding your part, you're going to get a minimal amount of run out. So wasn't that exciting? I mean, I, I personally get a lot of kicks out of doing that. It's a lot of fun for me because I don't get a chance to get out in the shop very often. But uh, you saw what we did and you saw the results. You got to admit, it came out pretty darn good. So within a few tenths here and there, but I was very happy with it and very pleased with it. So when it comes time to grind our part, we're going to be right there, and the concentricity is going to be less than a thousandth for sure. So we hope that'll help you, understanding a little bit about how to hold the part in the ID grinder. And I think if you use that philosophy about relieving the, ch the chuck jaws in the back and gr putting a slug in there, grinding them out in the front, you're going to have a great amount of accuracy that you're probably not going to get any other way. So uh, thanks for watching.